Bob Zykowitz on September the 21st. Wow, where is the time going? My guest this morning is Joanne Long. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning. It's nice to have you here with us today. We're going to be talking about rehabbing and over at Garden Ridge. But first, how do you get into rehab? Is there a curriculum within a university or a college or whatever that would prepare you for your career? There is. Um, I myself am a physical therapist assistant, uh -huh. and so I uh, went to a two-year program. There's an Associates of Applied Science um, with Northern Virginia Community College, and when I went to school, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to age myself, 23 years ago, um, it was at the Annandale campus, oh. but they now have a campus in Springfield that is solely for all of the medical um, programs that they offer. Oh, so they transfer, did they transfer the program to Springfield? Yes. From Annandale? <laughs> when you went to the campus 23 years ago, did you have to study anatomy? Oh, yes. Very, very important, right? Yes, anatomy and physiology mm -hmm. uh, one and two. One final question before I get into your updates. <clears throat> Are you constantly updating through media, or whatever, to keep you current as to rehab practices? We, by law, we have to um, take continuing education courses. Uh -huh. And we renew our license every two years, and part of the renewal qualifications are that we have so many hours of continuing ed courses as well as um, other types of education whether it be reading articles out of um, a PT magazine mm -hmm. um, maybe um, sitting in on a seminar at work um, can, you know I had other. a method Joanne for asking these questions because I want people to know that you are well qualified to take care of a patient on rehabbing, mm -hmm. and you certainly are. What updates do you have for us? Now, first of all, we, we know that you are assigned to Garden Ridge. Yes. When you have a patient in Garden Ridge, do you go to their uh, suite or room, or do they come to you? Um, it's either or. It depends on the circumstances. Uh -huh. um, if someone is not feeling well, or maybe they um, are what we call a low-level patient where they need mm -hmm. to be seen bedside, then we will go treat them in their room. If there's someone that's able to get up into a wheelchair, then we will bring them down to the rehab department oh, okay. and do the treatment there. So what's the update that you have for us today? Well, I just wanted to um, go over the differences between the three different therapies that we have. We have the physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy. Okay, physical therapy first. Well, physical therapy, um, we focus on um, strengthening the legs. We work on uh, dynamic standing balance activities. We work on walking. Uh, we work on making sure the person's able to safely get in and out of bed by themselves, be able to get in and out of um, chairs um, of various heights, whatever surfaces mm -hmm. they might have to sit on. Um, occupational therapy is one that a lot of times people are confused about. Um, the occupational therapy works a lot on strengthening of the arms. Um, they also work on dynamic standing balance. Um, mm -hmm. One of their main um, things that they work on are called ADLs, which stands for Activities of Daily Living. Basically, a they... ADL? ADL, Activities of Daily Living. Uh -huh. And what that in includes is making sure the person um, is able to bathe themselves, dress themselves. Mm -hmm. um, if they cook, make sure that they're safe in the kitchen, that they can um, get things in and out of the cupboards, in and out of the refrigerator, um, just do their daily activities that they would normally do in a safe manner. Like if it's somebody who is living in one of the independent living apartments and they come to us for whatever reason, maybe they had a hip surgery, um, occupational therapy would make sure that they're independent and safe with all of those activities before they go home. As part of this occupational therapy, you mentioned about being in the kitchen, would this also uh, include 
an exercise as to reaching for, we'll say, a bowl of sugar that's in the, in, in the cabinet? Well, definitely. And, mm -hmm. uh, occupational therapy works a lot with uh -huh. um, arm strengthening exercises and range of motion. Well, what, what, are the, what are some of the arm strengthening programs that you would follow? How would I strengthen my arm? There's lots of different exercises oh, right. you can okay. do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, depending on, you know, of course, uh, it can be individualized depending on if it's someone who maybe had a shoulder replacement, it's going to be a little bit different than someone who is maybe just going through general strengthening exercises. Um, sometimes there might be limitations. If it's mm -hmm. someone who had a shoulder replacement, they may not be able to raise their arm uh -huh. past a certain point. Um, but there's, you know, lots of different, um, you know, being able to reach up, you know, reaching out, um, bicep curls, you know, working the wrist, different areas of the arm. So there's and the third activity, physical, uh, occupational, and the speech. speech, and their proper title or license, or yeah, initials, um, speech language pathologists. And I think some people get confused with that also because they do work on speech, but they also work on swallowing, and they also work oh, on really? they also work on cognition. So if you've had someone who let's say has had a um, a bad stroke, and they're having difficulty, a lot of times they'll have difficulty with all three of those. They might be having difficulty with their swallowing, with their memory, mm -hmm. and also um, with their speech. So example. I just fell down, I hurt my shoulder. Mm -hmm. What would you do for me, or what would you prescribe for me to do to get this shoulder back to where I could use it? Well, it would depend on what kind of injury you had to your shoulder and if the doctor um, had any specific precautions. We need to follow um, the doctor's orders. You know, sometimes they'll say, okay, don't lift your arm past um, a 45 degree angle. So, you know, you can't lift it past right here. Um, mm -hmm. Or d you can't lift anything heavier than a five pound weight. Mm -hmm. So it would really depend and vary on what type of injury, you know, how extreme it was, if, there, if you had surgery or not, and what orders the doctor's mm -hmm. given. You do work real closely with the doctor. Who is the doctor over at GR, or is there one? There are, um, all of the doctors from the medical center um, do rounds and they take turns coming over there. Um, so we have Dr. Pham, Dr. Sethi, Dr. B, and Dr. Bethel. Well, so you work with, obviously, four doctors. Yes. <clears throat> and you follow, do you have to report to a doctor as to the progress of my rehab? We, we keep uh, daily treatment logs in the computer and once every seven days a progress note is mm -hmm. written to update and that's mainly for Medicare use. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to show that, that you're making progress so that Medicare will continue to, um, if Medicare is your primary insurance, we also get people to have Erickson Advantage, um, but the main goal you know, of course, is to, you know, show improvement and show that the person's making progress mm -hmm. so that we can justify continuing with therapy. You have already answered my next question because I was going to ask you, is Medicare involved in your rehab program? Does Medicare cover? And if so, how much of a the program does Medicare take care of, 100%? It, de whatever. Yeah, it depends. Um, you, a person has to have a three-day qualifying hospital stay for them to um, come see us and be under their Medicare Part A benefits. Did, did you say three days? Three days. Okay. So that's a, that, that is a prerequisite. Yes. A patient must be in the hospital three days and then come to you. Yes. Uh -huh. And then um, the way it works is uh, Medicare pays 100% um, from day one through day 20. 
and that's including the hospital days. Uh -huh. And then from day 21 through day 100, where a lot of people, most people don't need that much 100 days mm -hmm. worth of therapy. But if they did, Medicare would pay 80%, and then most people have a secondary insurance that should cover the 20%. Joanne, I think you gave us some very important information, and I believe it, it bears repeating because it is so important. Mm -hmm. Starting off with three, we're talking about Medicare. Mm -hmm. Starting off with a patient should be, it must be in the hospital three days before they come to you over in Garden Ridge. Yes, I'm, I'm not an expert on the insurance, but over the years, you know, my knowledge, my knowledge base mm -hmm. is that I know that there needs to be a three-day, what they call a qualifying stay. Okay. Sometimes people are in the hospital mm -hmm. just for what they call observation, mm -hmm. and unfortunately that doesn't count as hospital stay. Uh -huh. um, so they have to have a three-day qualifying hospital stay, and then they come to us and they can be covered under their Medicare Part A okay. up to their 20th day for 100%. Where is your office located specifically within Garden Ridge? First, second, third floor? We're on the second floor. Second floor. How many people are involved in your pursuits rehabbing? Are you talking about the residents or the no, therapists? Uh, staff. The staff. Um, well, over in Garden Ridge, we have four full-time physical therapists. Oh. Um, we also have therapists in Hunter's Crossing and we're all kind of the same group. Um, mm -hmm. But there are ones that specifically work over in Hunter's Crossing and ones that mainly work in Garden Ridge, but we will go back and forth to help out if needed. If someone wants to get in touch with you and or your personnel who work with you, mm -hmm. what is your phone number? The phone number for the Garden Ridge mm -hmm. Rehab is 703-923-3131, and then our extension is 604-4426. 604-4426. Four four, four, four two, two six. Three. And if no one's able to answer because we're all busy, you can leave a message and we'll get back to you. Wonderful. Joanne, you have really given us a lot of good information here this morning, and I appreciate your coming here and being with us and passing on these very cogent remarks that you have, and I thank you for coming this morning. Well, thank you.